You're watching Medfield TV. Hi, my name is Johnny Dalton. Uh, I am a lifelong Medfield resident, graduated 2013 from the high school and attended Bay State College in Boston, graduated 2017. And I went to school for audio engineering, sound design, music production, and uh, the enter and entertainment business. Moved back home here and now I've started my own business in uh, live uh, shows, engineering for live shows all around Boston and when I can, uh, studio recording. My interest in music started, I, th I think as most people, uh, as a kid. Uh, my dad is uh, very musical himself. He played guitar when he, you know, when he had started at, at the age that I did. It kind of all starts with uh, he had found a guitar uh, at the swap area at the local transfer station here and just brought it home for me to, to play on. He showed me a few chords and that's kind of where it all started from there. That, that. One guitar has now turned into a 23 in my collection, so <laughs> there's, there's a, lot to, a lot of toys to play with. I don't necessarily create my own music anymore. Um, I certainly used to, uh, you know, I, I, I was very creative when I first started and like kind of learning how to play guitar. I was very creative and I would write little songs. And that's kind of where the recording started. Uh, once, you know, my dad had given me that first guitar, and then I kind of learned how to play and then, oh, I was writing these little songs. Then it's like, okay, so now how do we keep these songs? You record them. And so the next little gift that my dad had given me uh, was this little digital eight track, two channel recorder. So you could plug two things into it at once and then it could only hold eight things on it at once. It was, you know, it was a very simple little machine, but that is where my recording journey started. And then it just kind of evolved into the full studio setup with, you know, the best digital interfaces available, all, the, all this gear and microphones and plugins and analog gear and everything. But it started with that little two track. I studied uh, audio engineering, uh, sound design, music production, uh, and what I really liked about the degree that I got at Bay State was that it was also all of that technical stuff with audio studio work, live sound engineering, but it was also all of the business stuff with the entertainment management. Uh, so on top of uh, doing, you know, being a proficient engineer, both in live and studio recording situations, I also got to learn how to manage bands, manage venues, be a promoter, booking agent, all that kind of stuff. Really handy, helpful information in to, to know all about that, working with all of these different kinds of people and what I do. My internship uh, consisted, uh, it, it was, it was kind of tough. I, I went and, and found my own. It's quite a miraculous story, really. Uh, the, the school obviously had a lot of connections with uh, you know, corporate audio entities and businesses. Uh, there was a lot of like the local radio stations, but I knew I didn't want to do those kind of things. Um, and it just happened to be one of those 3 a.m. YouTube benders uh, that I came across a video called Agapulamu by a band called Spiritual Res, and I just fell in love with it. They're a, Spiritual Res is a reggae rock band. Uh, they're a Berkeley band from Boston, and I, I just love the music. I love the video production, everything about it. Um, and then I just kind of dug a little further, uh, learned that their singer, Toft Willingham, uh, worked at a studio just in Milford, Massachusetts, so just a few towns away from here in Medfield and uh, I bought tickets to their show that they were playing at like a few months from then when I watched the video for the first time. Opened the door to the venue and he was standing right there. So I introduced myself and that was kind of where my internship started. And I got to be in a recording studio working on all of these projects with Toft and then out on the road as well learning how to really be in the industry with a hard-working touring band, learning stage production, uh, keeping, you know, taking care of their instruments, guitar teching, um, and, and, you know, really getting all of that just totally raw experience for two years straight. 
while you know some of my other classmates were maybe just getting coffee for two years at the radio station. Working for free for two years, but I got to be not just exposed to the experience of being in the studio, but meeting all of these people and making connections that way. That's the important thing about any internship, really. Um, but that led to meeting the managers of uh, uh, Hojoko in Boston, in, in uh, the Fenway area. They're a swanky, super cool, Japanese-style tavern with uh, really good food, really great bar, and they love to support the local music scene, and they needed an engineer to run shows. The managers there happened to know Toft, and Toft passed on that position to me, and I've been working there ever since. From, you know, one small little club restaurant, and then I was working for the hotel that was attached to it, doing their events, their music events, and some corporate, you know, video and audio needed events. Uh, and then from the hotel uh, led to uh, being introduced to a gentleman named Paul Armstrong, uh, who owns a company called Redefined, and they, uh, they own the Boston Music Awards. And so now I'm working with Paul, Redefined, and the Boston Music Awards uh, for, I mean, literally doing sound for the best bands around in Boston. And it's, it's been such a blast and, and a heck of a journey uh, to get here. Kung Pao Recording and Mastering is my professional home studio. The place where I get to keep my collection, it's currently at home in Medfield. I decided to start it, I mean, it, it was just kind of a natural progression. Um, you know, I mean, technology has made it really easy to record from home. And it's kind of the, the downfall of a lot of studios too, a lot of these big professional studios. Um, you know, it, it's hard because, and I've seen a lot of them go away even around Boston, because, you know, why would you pay a lot of money to be in this really cool space when all you need to do is spend a thousand dollars and get a little two-channel interface with a computer and you're set to go and you can record everything from your bedroom but what happened with the studio that i was interning at it unfortunately went away as i've seen a lot of studios do so it was just kind of a natural progression of okay now what do i do um, and uh, uh, my Parents have graciously given me the space that I need to start and build my business, and now it's you know getting time to to uh, look elsewhere to find the next chapter of Kung Pao. What I would love to have happen with the studio is have it you know I mean be, have it be a studio, and and there's still an uh, an important need for artists to for music musicians and bands and artists to have a space, an isolated space that A, sounds good, B, has a great collection of gear, and C, has a great collection of people in it that, that work it. Um, and, and that's what people really come to me for, is for my taste in, in how music can be crafted to sound on top of the gear, but it's, it's really working with me is the biggest thing that, that people come to me for. And I would just love to have a space a hundred percent dedicated to that because it's tough with you know sometimes with neighbors and, and you know I don't work crazy late hours or anything like that but having a commercial space would allow me to do that. Recording is very different than the live sound work that I do. The live sound work it's loud, rambunctious, there's a lot that can really go wrong and you have to be ready to fix anything that comes up but in studio recording it's a completely different environment. It's all about capturing that that pure, raw, beautiful performance in an isolated space. It's like painting with a brush and you're just creating art and until you complete the whole picture. It's this creative haven away from everything else and you just get to focus on your art. Maybe a little bit like a bedroom, but it also sounds really good and, and part of the reason studios still exist is the collection of gear, the people that run it, the, the engineers that you get to have at your disposal to help you make your art where you get to just focus on the performance and have someone else focus on putting everything together and making it sound awesome exactly as you hear it in your head. I think right now my biggest hero in the industry is Sylvia Massey. I've seen her talk a couple of times at these big professional audio conventions. There was just one in New York called AES for the Audio Engineer Society, which I'm a part of. She did a really 
couple of cool records in the 90s um, and so with some really big bands that I really like to listen to. Um, so she's like a, a huge hero of mine. She's had a very tough journey to get to where she is in her career, but um, to see how happy she is in creating this art and, and the same thing, helping these artists create their art is where she's happiest and that's where I find myself the happiest as well in the work that I do. With the creative stuff that I do, it's still fun to play out and, and you know play rock shows and have a lot of fun. Um, so one of my recording clients uh, is another medfielder uh, named Jason Ebbs, comes to Kung Pao. He plays everything, but I act as his recording engineer, producer, help him make all the decisions on what kind of gear to use, how to build his song from scratch. But He's just one guy, so he obviously needs a band to play live, and that's where I come in. He has me play bass, and I sing some of the harmony vocals as well. And then my identical twin brother, Patrick Dalton, plays uh, the drums. And we also have another guitar player named Eli, and so it's the four of us, and uh, we play uh, you know, just some local shows here and there once or twice a month, and it's, just, it's a lot of fun. We're coming off hot off of a... Uh, a Battle of the Bands win at Northeastern University at their uh, really cool uh, music venue that they run there uh, called After Hours. And it was, it was just super fun. We, you know, we're always kind of like trying to be humble. It's like, oh, you know, maybe we'll win and, you know, maybe we won't. But we played, we rocked out. So it was really cool and just like, you know, really hyped us up about just playing more shows for everyone in the future. I'm finally able to talk about it because it's out, it's done, it's super cool. I was a part of a small part, but still a part of a, uh, of a Disney production. Brian Scott is the uh, director uh, and writer of this beautiful little animated short. You'll see it on Disney Plus by, uh, by next year, which is really exciting. I was a small part of recording some instruments uh, for uh, the music that was used with this animated short. There's no dialogue or anything, so it was really cool to see how the music helps to tell the story and the emotions in this in this animation. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I really like to do and, and just like knowing that that video is gonna be watched by a lot of kids and you know, really loved and enjoyed by that. It's gonna help a lot of kids too. It's a really beautiful story and a really beautiful song. So it'll, it'll be really exciting once that is out on their, on their streaming platform. Arts are important and it's an important part of uh, any culture uh, for any group of people. Um, and Boston, I think, does a really good job of, of providing those kind of spaces. And I'm also very excited for a lot of the plans in Medfield, specifically with the uh, State Hospital as well. I'm hoping that there's going to be, uh, in fact, I know with the, uh, the um, Cultural Arts Council um, that there's, gonna, there's some big plans there to, to help bring artistry, community, and, and entertainment to, to Medfield. For me, it kind of harkens back to Spring Fest and Fall Fest back in the day, where the town would put on these big concerts and have these local bands play, and it was always a blast. Medfield has done a really great job of providing funding for their arts, uh, as well as, you know, just as much as the sports and, and everything like that. And I'm very happy I live in a town that sees that because you know you see it all over the place where music and, and art classes just those are the first things that get cut and go in a lot of educational programs. I'm super glad to be a part of Medfield, to be from Medfield. Um, go Warriors! Part of my career, um, you know, it, it's investing my uh, blood, sweat and tears into the arts and, and to, to help these artists create their music, get it out there. You know, this is my educational background. This is what I do as a profession. Today, what I do now, I mean, it's, it's a creativeness all on its own in making someone else's song sound good. That's kind of a thing that a lot of people don't know. There's several different steps to what I do. First, you have to record the song. Then you have to take everything that you recorded and mix it together. And then once the mix is done and it sounds like a real song, then you have to master it, which is bringing it up in level generally and making it kind of ready for the radio is the term. Uh, so there's three important steps in what I do and what I offer in studio recording. 
and like I said, it's just, it's really an art all in itself because not everyone can do it. Musicians, some, some of them can record and produce their own music and they're very good at it. Some of them can't and that's where I come in. Kung Pao is, is always open um, and you know, I cater to all genres, all kinds of artists, all kinds of um, audio and artistic needs. Uh, if, you know, if it's music you're looking for, if it's just a commercial you're looking for, to just, just record something, if you have a poem that you would like to record or anything like that, voiceover work, there's all kinds of stuff that involves audio and that's what I specialize in is everything audio. On top of that, um, I do all the live sound work so if uh, anyone has, uh, knows a band that needs a sound engineer, knows a club or venue that needs a sound engineer, this is also what I do on top of the studio recording. But Kung Pao recording and mastering, uh, the gear, the people that I get to meet and work with is where my passion lies. So I'm, I'm always itching to make that next record. Please uh, visit the, uh, the new website, www.kungpaorecording.com. Uh, you can also find me uh, on Instagram, uh, same thing, at Kung Pao Recording, and uh, just, you know, uh, hit me up on Facebook or anything. Connecting with people is what I do, and, and uh, it's, it's to connect with artists, help them record and get their art out there and, and heard in the best way possible. You're watching Medfield TV.